day of the 90-day session. We're 10 percent through session already. I'm Senator Berta Gardner. I represent Midtown Anchorage, Spinard, the UMED District. I am joined by Senator Tom Begich, who represents downtown Fairview Anchorage, and by Senator Bill Wilikowski from East Anchorage, J. Bear. And today, well, I want to talk about the hearings we've had in the Labor and Commerce Committee, and I want to applaud Senator Costello for lining up the economists who came in from the Institute of Social Economic Research, from the housing market, from the banking industry, from um, uh, researchers and consultants. And the consensus was without a doubt, in fact, it was unanimous, that Alaska is in a recession and that the recession um, is very much impacted by job layoffs, which kind of cycle down through, and that this is the year to act, bearing in mind that whatever we do takes a year or two to, to take effect and to reach the economy, we have to act right now. And our fail a failure to act means that the recession will be deeper and longer lasting. And it's just urgent, urgent. It is a crisis. Um, at the same time, ICER reports that Dealing only with the permanent fund dividend and using those earnings is the most regressive option for the state and that it will hurt Alaskans and only Alaskans and that we really just have to do it now. So we've been waiting for several years for the Senate majority to come up with a plan and it appears to our dismay and disappointment that this year, again, their plan is to use permanent fund earnings with something along the lines of Senate Bill 128, reducing the dividend, and to do more dramatic cuts, which the economists say are harmful and will deepen and continue the recession. It's completely reckless, it is dangerous, and it will hurt this state. So. We believe that even though we are in the minority, we have a plan and we are going to talk about our plan and do everything we can to push that forward. Um, our plan, and Senator Wilkowski has suggested that we call it, uh, talk about it in terms of stages and gates because that's, that's terminology that's familiar to people in the legislature and it is the way we see it. We've talked about, you know, what elements you do first, in what order, and only at the end, if you still have to, do you reduce the permanent fund or use the earnings on a routine basis. But really, it is a series of gates. If we get this done, then we support the next step. And basically, we are stock, and we'll talk in more detail here, but basically, targeted cuts is always where we start, and the state has done some damaging cuts, but also some targeted cuts, and that process needs to continue. We need to address oil tax credits and the, the taxes generally. After that, broad-based taxes, and only then talk about the permanent fund, including using earnings and also the dividend. And with that, um, Senator Ellis, Senator Wilkowski is going to start with the taxes and oil tax credits. Great, thank you, Senator Gardner. So by now, everyone agrees we are in a recession. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And immediate action is necessary this session to help us get out of that recession. As of December 2016, Alaska has the highest unemployment rate in the nation, we've heard. By the end of 2017, we will have lost 15,000 jobs, bringing us back to job levels that we had in 2010. We continue to have a $3 billion deficit. I think everyone in this building wants to tackle this problem, wants to solve this problem, but there are very different philosophies on how you actually do that. We think the plan being put forward by the Senate majority is the wrong approach and we think it would deal a crushing blow to uh, working families all across Alaska. The, the majority plan, Senate majority plan, in large part adopts the governor's plan, which seeks to balance the budget predominantly by uh, cutting the permanent fund dividend down to $1,000 or less uh, permanently and every year, uh, regardless of ability to pay. And for the average Alaskan family, that's a cut of over $4,000. That's a cut of roughly 10% of the average Alaskan family's income. And the office worker family would pay a rate of about 10%, uh, while the millionaire CEO would pay a rate of around 0.01%. And uh, a child, a single mother, a disabled veteran would uh, lose a significant chunk of money that they need just to survive while someone making six figures flying from Texas or Oklahoma to Alaska to work two weeks on, two weeks off, pays absolutely nothing. 
we think that's a fundamentally unfair plan. According to ICER, using the permanent fund is the most regressive way to balance the budget. So this plan does not align with our philosophical values. Our caucus represents many of the people who would be hit hardest by this plan. So what is our solution, as Senator Gardner mentioned? Uh, I, I, I like to refer to it as a staged gate approach. First, let's cut. We agree there, there should be cuts, but we have very different ideas of what should be cut. The Senate Democrats have proposed cuts over the last two years, over a billion dollars in cuts. But we think the cuts should not be targeted to uh, dealing a crippling blow to kids, to seniors, to disabled veterans, to working families like is currently being proposed. We believe the cuts uh, should be accomplished, but we want to see cuts that are more targeted towards things like uh, projects that we don't need, mega projects, uh, things like corporate welfare. And so we've proposed over the last few years cutting tens of millions of dollars, for example, in refinery tax credits uh, to one particular outside refiner who testified they didn't even need those tax credits. We've proposed cutting oil tax credits for years, uh, a significant cuts. We, I don't think anybody is, is strictly opposed to doing oil tax credits, but we have a system in place right now where we just, uh, it's a shotgun approach. There's, there, there's no targeting of the money. And what's happened is we ha we, right now under, uh, if you look at the revenue forecast, we are expected to receive $89.7 million in production taxes in 2018, and we're expected to pay out $1.3 billion in tax credits and net operating losses. And we've got some handouts for you from the uh, revenue forecast that we can get. In fact, for the next decade, we are expected to pay out more in oil tax credits than we receive in production taxes. A and we just think this, uh, this is just too expensive. And, and the, the premise for doing these cuts and these tax credits was that we would get more production and ultimately we would get more revenue. In fact, they named the bill the More Alaska Production Act. But if you look at the, the revenue forecast, which shows the oil production forecast for the next 10 years, production is expected to decline every single year for the next decade. And so uh, we're currently over 500,000 barrels by 2026. Uh, we're projected to go down to 288,000 barrels per day. Sure, there are some new fields that we're hearing are coming online, but they are not enough to stem the massive declines that we're seeing. So we think we need a tax structure that genuinely uh, increases production. And also, we need to look at the tax rate. It's not just tax credits. Uh, Dr. Scott Goldsmith from ICER wrote a study a couple of years ago, and he looked at oil tax, uh, the amount of oil that was produced in Alaska from 1959 to 2009. There was $500 billion, $500 billion with a B, dollars worth of oil produced during that time frame, 50 years. The state's uh, share was $150 billion. That's exactly 30%. Uh, last year, we received approximately 8 percent. This year, the projections are we will receive about 3 percent. And so uh, Governor Hammond, as you all remember, used to talk about uh, splitting it a third to splitting all the oil revenue that was generated, a third for the state, a third for the federal government, and a third for the oil industry. We've historically gotten a little bit less than that. But you've got to fix oil taxes and you've got to fix the tax structure. And so those are the first two stages. You've got to, uh, let's do some targeted cuts, but cuts that don't devastate working families, lower income people, sick, the poor. And then you've got to fix the oil tax structure. And then uh, Senator Begich is going to talk about some of the other uh, stages. Thank you, Senators Gardner and Wilikowski. From my perspective, the Senate's efforts will actually hurt individual Alaskans significantly more than they're going to hurt corporations or those that uh, have fundamentally more wealth. And that, to me, is just simply wrong. And when, when we talk about targeted cuts and we talk about a fair oil stra tax structure, those are really two pieces, two stages in this staged approach that Senator Wilkowski has illustrated. A third stage needs to be broad-based taxes. We need broad-based revenue generating. And whether, whatever that finally looks like, I know generally our caucus generally supports an income tax, but whatever that looks like, and it, it needs to be something that is fair that it doesn't adversely impact those who are uh, living in poverty or lower income residents, and it needs to be able to collect revenue from those 
who that that one fifth of our workforce, according to our Department of Labor, that are that are essentially not paying anything here in the state now. So over 20 percent of our workforce, or approximately 20 percent of our workforce, is resident out of state. If we used even just the governor's proposed income tax plan, families earning $50,000 a year would pay about $74. I think while taxes are an unpopular topic, most of my constituents and many Alaskans who care about a state that is educating its children, providing a strong university system, ensuring that it has a working infrastructure, are willing to pay to ensure that they have a state that is safe and productive and that provides an opportunity for the future. So we generally are approaching that as our, our third stage in this process. And then the fourth stage, as Senator Gardner alluded to, deals with how we use the permanent fund earnings. In general, we believe that there has to be good faith with the Alaska public, which means that we have to be sure to protect our, our, in our citizens' right to have a dividend. And why we believe that is the dividend, as, as uh, former Governor Hammond has indicated, uh, <coughs> former Speaker of the House Gardner and others have indicated, the dividend is Alaska's commitment, our ability to hold our legislature accountable to not wasting and using inappropriately the permanent fund itself. It's the direct relationship between citizens of the state and that fund, which is really our, 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 most, uh, our most potential renewable resource. So if we're going to do this right, we have to ensure that the public knows that we want to protect that dividend, which is why we've uh, co-sponsored or supported legislation or resolutions that seek to enshrine the dividend. At the same time, if we are going to use earnings, we should make sure that the use of those earnings is a last resort, not a first resort, which has often been the case. Together, if you do each of these four things, targeted cuts, a fair oil tax structure, uh, broad-based uh, broad revenue approaches, and a fair use of the earnings while protecting the dividend, you not only can reach a balanced budget for the state of Alaska, but you can actually have a budget that looks toward the future. And I think that's what we're all looking for. So we believe the Senate Majority's plan is damaging and dangerous to the future of this state, to our economy. We're supported by the work of economists from all sectors, and the time to act is right now. Unemployment at the state, and our state is now the highest in the nation. Less than a year ago, we were in the middle of the pack or above average. Um, and the actions the Senate majority wants to take will just make things worse. Um, the time to take action is right now. We need to have confidence in the future of this state and build that. We support wise, targeted cuts not cuts to departments and services that protect Alaska's future. We support a broad-based tax that minimally impacts a, um, average working Alaskans and families across the state. We support protecting the permanent fund for future gen generations. And only last will we use the permanent fund earnings after the dividend has been protected and if it's necessary. And with that, we're open to questions. Becky. Becky Bohr with the Associated Press. Um, assuming we get to a, where you want in a discussion on the permanent fund, uh, Senator Dunleavy has proposed um, effectively paying out the dividend as we have, and then um, from the earnings, and then using um, money that's also in the earnings to help pay for state government. He, of course, has deeper cuts and those sort of things, but he he wants to keep the dividend intact. So when you're talking about um, uh, the, the approach that you're taking, is that something similar that you would be looking at? Um, or can you talk about it, how your approach to the uh, 